afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John, this is Minya Trunet, and welcome back to Thrones of Britannia. Well, last time we took up the role of the Vikings, attempting to survive in a world where the English haters, the other Vikings haters, basically everyone hates us. We've got a lovely big empire, but it's not doing us any favours because all it is is a massive large amount of territory that needs to be defended from raiders, from the English, from pretty much everything in fact. We've managed to expand our empire a little bit, our vassals have been integrated. Unfortunately, they decided to actually break down their own army while they were doing it, which doesn't seem like a good idea. Now, first things first, let's get some new troops in. Hopefully, we can start training, yeah, some more skirmishers. Do you have any horse yet? Okay, you don't have any horse whatsoever. Um, you've got one skirmisher. Do you need two skirmishers? No. I'm going to give you a horse. And that's fine. And that also gives me one extra spare slot. You over here, trying to flipping protect London, take some extra javelins. There we go. This tiny army is guarding London with the aid of a garrison. And other than that, save up the money for next turn. Meanwhile, Guthrum who's just managed to win a Pyrrhic victory against some bloody raiders, albeit we did get ourselves, yeah, an actual good bit of uh, war fervor. Our army likes us because we actually, you know, engaged with an enemy and merged all of them, which is all very, very nice indeed. The English are happy too. The English are happy because I protected the English against raiders, though my war fervor is minus two right now, which is a bit of a shame. Like, I could do with it being a bit higher. Like, you know, maybe if literally everyone's attacking us, it's okay to go to war, guys. Now, what I really want right now is Wessex to just back off for the time being, all right? If Wessex would just back off for the time being, that'd be marvellous. Like, they've done this before. They've come to this territory, and they've changed their minds and gone back. So, if they'd like to do that again, that'd be just flipping great. And the answer is, yep, backing off. Good, that buys us precious time. Precious time, so they're not moving in right now. But Sussex is moving. Okay, and in comes those bastards, but they are walking over a bog in winter. So they are suffering from attrition, which is nice. We're still going to lose that little town to them, but it's going to give us time while they're crossing very, very unfavorable terrain to get drawn up. Prepare the defences. What's going on over there? Another faction goes down. This is just two factions go down, in fact. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Thrones of Britannia. The little factions get wiped out pretty quickly. You could make it there right now. You have taken a bit of a knock from trying to cross this bog. Honestly, I just need to fall back and let them take it. They might not even want it. They might just want to ransack it. I can't stand up to them, not with only 10 troops, when they seem to be still mostly in good shape. Fortunately, with Quartermaster 2 that I've now put on Guthrum, he can actually get back towards London very, very quickly indeed. But he doesn't need to be towards London just this second. Well, I say that. He's a little bit on the wounded side, isn't he? It's spring right now. We've still got three seasons before it's winter again, and then it becomes dangerous to cross open ground. It's a shame he can't quite get to a settlement over here. Right, war declarations. Oh. Well. Well, 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 well. Good, I say. I say, good, you stupid bastards. Maybe, just flipping maybe, you shouldn't have let your friends attack me. Okay, now this all works, because presumably it's not just them. No, indeed, Wessex is now at war with all three of these Vikings. Now, admittedly, they can probably just walk straight through that, but that's good. It buys me time to prepare, to recover, to get some more infrastructure built, in general, to be, like, you know, not dead. So, I mean, if anything, hmm... Priority, therefore, as I can be pretty confident, some of the forces of Wessex will probably now be heading north into this territory, will be this guy just needs to basically head north as quickly as he can. Fastest way to do that would be, yeah, just basically head along the open road. It's a shame that means you do not have a good opportunity to heal up, but he's got plenty of supplies. Sorry, I'm not sure if I mentioned supplies. Yes, when you're in enemy territory, supplies go down. 
Uh, meaning you can't just send one like massive army into enemy territory forever because if supplies run out eventually uh, attrition digs in speaking of which how are your supplies your supplies right now are 79 dropping by 15 a turn so eventually he'll have to turn back or accept the attrition for the moment at least what am i gonna do i could break down some forces over here in order to create more forces here but I won't be able to get him reasonably more than say, well, anything I build is going to be badly damaged over here because it won't have been properly recruited yet. But if I had enough troops here, maybe he wouldn't attack me in the first place. Maybe he'd just naff off over there. And also, worth having a think about, if these guys, the Deer Vikings, are about to be absolutely slaughtered by Wessex, this could be a good opportunity to have the farmland off this guy. Because potentially, give it a couple of turns, he might be in no position to defend himself. And honestly, they shouldn't have let their mate punch me in the face if they wanted me to not do that. Ah yes, priority though. I do need to actually get a church built in Colchester. Purely to basically fund, if you like, the unhappiness that exists as a result of all of the salt manufacturing here. Okay, I'm going to play this safe. If he takes that territory, I'm just going to take it back later. This guy falls back to an actual walled city. I have a little look to see what was here, by the way. This place is a plus 10% market when there's, there's literally no market available here. Fascinating. Also, apparently, there's undeveloped land, which is odd because it's tier 2. Does tier 2 mean there's... Okay, apparently tier 2 is just, yeah, spare land. Okay, I didn't think that was the case. I thought you needed an extra one. But never mind. This is a market town, plus 10% to market. So, I could potentially, if I had the funds for it, build a mint here. Turn this place into a bit of a nice money spinner. Or, because of the churches, I could convert this place into a centre of industry. Uh, except I don't actually have, yeah, I don't have the tech for tools. Anything with the red means I can't build it yet. So my only options are grain pits for unit replenishment. Could be very, very useful indeed. Uh, I could get an additional garrison. It's not huge, to be honest. It's only four more units, and they're not the most spectacular units in the world either. I can't have any of the rest of that. Yeah, this is a bit of an odd settlement, really. There's all these churches, but they don't really do anything. Uh, so as a result, yeah, we'll probably just get the mint there, but not just yet. With these two armies, we're finally in a position to actually fight back. So they're going to take the settlement, but we will take it right back off them immediately afterwards. Because, ooh, actually, I probably should have sent this guy north. Because this guy, plus the garrison, is perfectly capable of handling them if they decide to. Oh, this garrison is still growing from nothing. Yeah, only just then. <laughs> this guy... Potentially should have headed over towards here because once he's taken this he might start heading north in a hurry He might try and take more stuff But if he does he's gonna run out of supplies in the not too distant future. Oh Difficult one difficult one. Well, you know what? At least bare minimum Wessex is now busy with someone who's not me and hopefully the next set of raiders that show up decide to target Wessex and not me because I could do with a massive group of raiders showing up and smashing someone in the face who isn't me. That'd be just marvellous. Well, that's all I could do this turn anyway. If I'm lucky, what will happen now is... These idiots will just start marching up. Ah, there's no actual path there. Fine. Logically, they kind of have to... Have to cut close by to my territory to get over to Buckingham. But hopefully they just head over there and that'll be absolutely fine. And these idiots come and take E-Leg, but that's fine. I can come and take it straight back off them. So Wessex are... No! They did just go the direct route. Good. Right, so they're currently some distance away from me. But their vassals are probably coming as well. Now, that force is obviously... Yeah, those guys are coming over there. That's fine. Now, do they actually want to take that, or do they just want to sack it? I did not see... So there's the fruit tree people. Hadn't really noticed them before. I'm not sure me and them have much to do with each other. 
And a settlement has been sacked. Okay. Sacked. Dewitt doesn't exist anymore. Hang on, that means logically... Oh, blimey. Oh, hang on, let's just nip over to Wales for a second. Right. Um, Wales is screwed. So, uh, Gwyneth basically ate Powys, but then got eaten by Mercia. So now they've got basically nothing around their capital. They've got, like, one city over here with its garrison, one tiny thing here. Who's all of this, by the way? That's... Wait, who even are you? Who are you guys who have just basically walked in and taken over all of South Wales? This is the... Oh, blimey, are you the guys who are the... The vassals of... Uh, vassal Kingdom of... Oh! Vassal Kingdom of Gwyneth! Right! So, that's... That's all fascinating! The Vassal Kingdom's doing well. Oh, but we've got technology underway. Fine. So we've managed to unlock some new tech. Now we can either make all my sword and axes better or all my shields better. Get the offensive tactics in. Let's focus on that. And we've also got a building requires repair. Yeah, I know, because these bastards came and sacked it. But that does mean, yeah, some of them are very badly damaged. How are you guys doing, by the way? You guys are not so hot. What we should probably do is, actually, I wonder if we could just, ooh, if I were to send this army over to here to just take this territory and then basically have them head up north, how's the garrison looking over here? Six units. Just because they came a stupid way and crossed the marsh, but I've actually got a road. I could possibly get over here, have this territory, get the farmland as well, and be straight up to... Hang on, how do the roads go? The roads around here go... Yeah, there's a road. There's a road cutting through the marsh right here. I could have that territory right now. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. That would, however, mean declaring war on these bastards. And I think they are my declared friends. Yeah, that's that's kind of the problem. They are kind of declared friends. If I backstab them, is that going to be a serious problem? And is now the right time to backstab them? Because uh, I could kind of do with their help. Dealing with... Oh yeah, Wessex didn't quite make it to Buckingham, but they're almost there. And if I attack these guys, it's also going to draw me into war with these guys. And these guys all together have a chance of killing one of the armies of... Oh, bloody hell, there's more armies of Wessex coming in. And also, <laughs> there's armies of Sussex coming in too. Now, that army of Sussex might actually be heading at me. Oh, bloody hell, this is all fascinating. So yeah, I can repair this place if I wanted to, which costs money, or I can just let it happen naturally over time, because it will repair itself. The people get bored of waiting for you to pay for it, and it just sort of happens. You could get over here right now, but you might lose that fight. Okay. I could just work around the outside. It's summer right now. If I was to... Ah! Unfortunately, zone of control. Can I actually fit through this area? Hmm. If you guys were to give me military access, I'd really appreciate it. That, as it turns out, is insulting. What if I toss in a bit of money to sweeten the deal? Then it becomes intriguing. This is not right for us now. Okay, I don't want to spend that much money on it, to be honest. I mean, let's be honest, the sensible thing that really should happen is this army starts moving down south to actually get down to London and set up a proper barricade down over here while this force rests up for a minute and deals with these bastards. Or this force starts heading up over in this direction, ready to counteract any attack to the north because this force does need to rest up. No, let's get you heading south. Get you heading south, just in case. You get into this city, start healing up, and this city is... Actually, this city is a good place to heal up, because this... No, that's a tithe hall. That's the wrong sort of building. Boo. If I had this, it would be much better. 
Though actually, that there is 100 gold down for 30 food up. And replenishments. Yeah, go on then. Let's spend some money on that. Spending like 1,000 gold on 30 food. I'm happy to take the economic hit to make that happen. Now, question is, what happens next in the war with Wessex? And where's this army planning to go? Now it's actually, yeah, already actually sacked that place. So there's no point them really taking it. Or actually, you know what? In Warhammer 2, I saw dwarves flipping razor place to the ground and then immediately settle it. So who knows what the total war AI will decide it wants to do next. So as for Wessex, they start marching. Did they even take that? There's Mercia, probably about to knock out Gwyneth, in which case I'm not sure what's going to happen to the other Welsh faction who are the vassals of Gwyneth, but whatever. And, oh, you guys are worryingly close to my territory. Where are you going? Where did they just go? Okay, they didn't attack me, otherwise the game would have flagged it. But I tell you what, this is a flipping hard Total War game. I have played many Total War games with, uh, yeah... Far easier starts than this. This is a tricky bastard, though they did warn me the East Anglia campaign was tricky. They're not kidding. And what has just been sacked? Did you just... Did you just sack the same thing again? And what do you want me to... You want me to go and just raid over here? Well, I'm kind of busy. Also, who just leveled up? One of my governors. Ah, the merchant chappy. Well, that's absolutely fine. Let's just get ourselves a bit more money coming in. Kinda need more money. So he's just... Yeah, now he's just sacking the same settlement. Um, over and over again. Forever. Which is... Interesting. Oh, no, he actually went and took it. Okay. Question is... Is this army ready to go and take it back? Because I'm... I'm not sure about that. I think possibly they could do with a turn or two more to recover. And owing to the rather worrying... Yeah, you can just make it to Hereford. Owing to the worrying presence of Sussex right there, I'm just having these guys move south. It's ah, it's autumn now. That's annoying because that means if I want to move over open ground to try and make it down towards London next turn... That's going to be tricky. And you, please stop looking at me like that. Like, we're not at war. Your owner is at war with someone else. Go and be at war with them. Right, let's just see if we can just slightly scare them off by just training one more thing. Oh, we've got a little bit more going on in the pool now. I like the fact we've just got slightly more in the pool, though I'm annoyed we don't have any archers. That's a bit of a shame. And yeah, until I've actually got... Hang on, let's go over to the tech tree here. Yeah, the problem that we've got here is I can't unlock more archers until I unlock the missile tag. But I can't get the missile tag until I've got enough bows, crossbows, or skirmishes recruited. But I physically can't recruit anymore because my recruitment pool doesn't have enough in it. So I physically can't get to that tech even if I wanted to for the time being. Uh, right. Let's give you... Honestly, I'm... Oh, blimey. Huskars have upkeep of 248. Wow. Okay, well, their melee damage is flipping incredible. Fine, I'll give you that much, yes. Right, just take some cheap axemen. One unit of cheap axemen. Get working on that. We got 1,800 in the kitty. What else can we work on here? Because once again, the food is pretty much gone. And the food is pretty much always a good idea. Actually, you know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea to potentially upgrade Norwich just so I could actually give them... Yeah, I could give them a... Ooh, but this place says... No, sorry, I've already actually uh, set that there. Ooh, what's the right place to upgrade? Actually, I could get this great hall upgraded. That would be even more flipping units and even more replenishments. That couldn't hurt, you know. Yeah, screw it. Get that done. That is probably worthwhile. So in six turns, we'll have even more stuff coming in. Ah, wait, hang on. I didn't realise this because, yeah, the roads are a little bit sometimes not obvious. There is a road leading out of Hereford over here down towards London. So I can get reinforcements down towards London if need be. And this army of ten, that's pretty much at full strength, this army of three and the London garrison together could see off that army of Sussex. 
So we can hold for now. Bear in mind, there's nothing to potentially... Ooh. Oh, I didn't realise this. The river. The river poses all sorts of problems for them. They might just be trying to cross by, but the actual river being in the way means that, yeah, the direction they're coming from, they've got no choice but to pass through my zone of control in order to go and join up with their leader. Okay, if that's the case, that is, that is flipping good news right there. And Wessex is just continually marching further and further north, and Mercia is just wiping out the Welsh. Uh, yeah, the English are doing very well in this match, and good. He's not attacking London, he's just trying to cross the river. Now these bastards are... Did you just put me under siege? Right. Well, that's fascinating, because that means you're going to engage in a siege over winter when you're going to be the one who actually ends up suffering from attrition. Okay, well, on the plus side, when he tries to attack us, we can deal with him. If he does, anyway. Oh, I really hope he does. How long can this city actually last? Okay, we got four turns before suffering any attrition. We got six turns till we surrender. We've got ourselves, yeah, decent wall and settlement strength. And we've got ourselves, yeah, plenty of food. Thankfully, we have plenty of agricultural stuff in this area. Question is, is he going to try and push him? I mean, right now, I think he suffers from... Oh, darn it. I think he's just... Yeah, he's on a road, so he's okay. That's a shame. Okay. What we need to do is, I could send relief north, or I could bring this force south. What is the right thing to do? Because what is this guy doing? Well, I've got literally a city under siege right now. Like, surely the right thing has got to be responding to that and making sure those bastards get cleared out once and for all. Sussex does not seem to be imminently attacking and in all fairness it's not like I could hold Hereford or St Albans if he actually came this way so it's not like there's any flipping point just kind of trying to set up defensively around here quite frankly I could just oh wow by the way 16 stack 20 stack and the vassals sending in full stacks themselves Kent have decided not to bother getting involved however yeah all right deploy back north now that we have reason to believe that actually what's going on is... Can I get over there safely? Yeah. Looks like actually I might just be able to... You know what? I'll take a slight knock to travel slightly further. I'll probably take a little bit of attrition because I'm going to be outside during winter. But this means this guy should be able to make it over here next turn. And then actually... Hmm. With the aid of the garrison, I think... Yeah, hang on. We've got the garrison coming in to help. Oh, the garrison's got, like, nothing. Okay. I probably shouldn't do... Oh, hello. Right, you've got a lot of javelin men and archers. How's my army? My army has a lot of archers, too. How's your infantry? You've got some actual proper swords. You've got a few long axemen. No. Let's wait for the reinforcements. If he wants to try and push in, let him. Let's just wait for those reinforcements to arrive. And also just keep building up the agriculture, more food, more armies. The economy is fragile, but it'll flipping do. If it needs a boost, I could just go and raid some territories at some point. This guy needs to be taken care of, and then we should just be able to, yeah, pretty much walk through his territory over to here, and then we can lock down over here. That'll be fine. And Wessex is... Some of it's heading down south. I think they just basically went and sacked... Bedford, was that? And then they walked away. I'm not sure they're... Okay. That's, that's interesting. And yeah, their vassals are still bumming around, just not really doing anything. And oh! Well! You've decided to come and attack the walls, have you? Well, good flipping luck, I say. Now, I'm glad we get to see this so early on because settlements in thrones are different. As in, they're all different to each other. Like, constantly. All the time. Nothing's ever quite the same. So, you never know quite what you're going to get. 
or as a result, where the right places to hold out are going to be. Sometimes you get really lucky and a settlement's got like bridges and hills and choke points. Sometimes not so much. So, let's have a little loop see. What do we have up here? We've got, ah, well, this is a bit of an intriguing one, isn't it? Uh, so they need to take, well, this area over here is, hang on, yep, that is indeed the victory point. The chieftain's house, because apparently he lives in a tree. Um, I can also set up barricades wherever I would like to. And they're coming from this direction. Okay, so let's have a little, ah, this is good. We've got flipping watchtowers and watchtowers. And those watchtowers are, they're pretty brutal. And all he's bringing is two towers and one ram, because he needs to get in there, because he knows reinforcements are coming. Fine. So, what else do we have? We've also got, yeah, there's other gates at the side, don't worry about that. Probably best we just actually set up the barricades. Like, pretty much, yeah, right there to try and stop him there. If he gets past the walls, if he gets past the walls, where's the right place to try and hold him? Well, we could actually have, look at this, this is a nice place for a last stand right here, isn't it? Yeah, this could work very, very nicely indeed. We could have archers up on the high ground and some decent quality infantry just basically blocking up the actual ways up over here. Meanwhile, there's also just... <laughs> There's an unrelated victory point over there that I don't know if they even have a way of getting to, but <laughs> fine, that's that that's okay, beautiful. So, we got a huge pile of archers and javelin men at the front door. So they can be part of one team right there. So they're just part of team one, marvellous. We've got a big pile of troops in the form of Guthrum himself. He's the elite of the elite. Honestly, they're going to struggle to get past him full stop. What we probably should do is, uh, yeah, have our nice armoured swordsman right at the door here. So we can have one unit of swordsmen right here. But don't let them do all of it. Make sure they've got help. Give them some nice long axemen. Let's actually you know, get down there and enjoy our axemen. See, there we are. These guys are not well armoured, but they've got the big axes. These guys have got the armour, the swords, the shields. They'll stand up to a flipping lot. These guys are good. So they're guarding my front door. Secondary troops for potentially guarding any other incursion from the towers can just be here and here, ready to deal with that. And the rest of it, yeah, you guys can actually probably be part of group two as well, to be honest. There we are. They join group two. Everyone else probably wants to actually back off and be part of the secondary group at the back because if we can't win it here let's just actually leave a handful of troops here just as you know the emergency backup parts of group two and go on let's actually let the guy who you know fights on behalf of this actual city chill out there but as for Guthrum himself he's too important Guthrum is going to fall back to the final actual choke point up here because over here Guthrum can be part of a very nice last stand. And if they do actually break the walls, my archers can just fall back to here. And let's actually keep, yeah, the cab at the front door just to deal with the risk of, yeah, fleeing units. Fine. Start the flipping battle. I think we will be absolutely flipping fine, however, because we've got these towers on our side and towers... Towers will shoot forever for a million miles. It's beautiful. The enemy approaches. Yes, I notice, Mr. Narrator Man. It's fine. And all we need to do is just, yeah, take down one or two of these towers and what have you. And we will be in good shape. In fact, archers, just for fun, how about all of you go over to your flaming arrows just to basically set everything on fire? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah! Yeah! I think that'd be very, very nice indeed. It looks to me like the fire damage is going up pretty quickly, actually. Yeah, that'll do the flipping job. And in comes more flaming shot. Admittedly, a little bit on the slow side. We could do with a bit more, but equally, they are pushing up quite slowly too. And yeah, I do like how uh, things just get destroyed by the siege equipment as it comes up. That's kind of cool. Uh, they're coming up a bit on the slow side. 
But I'm a little bit concerned about this. But yeah, they do keep stopping and starting. Which is fine. Hopefully we don't need to get up to 100%. I might need to actually send some... Yeah, screw it. Go, 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 go. Let's send some troops out the front gate. Just to slow them down. No, that looks like that's burning to me. I'm seeing distinct signs of fire. I'm seeing... No, okay, don't... Okay, change my mind. Don't open the gate. I'm pretty sure that this thing is starting to be a little bit on the smoky side right now. And boom, boom, boom. Fire damage. Come on. Focus, 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 focus. Fine. They've managed to get one tower to the walls. The other one is starting to smoke. Honestly, it kind of looks like they're actually doing a pretty good job here. Okay. I'd say it's time for my archers not to back off yet, but all of you guys, it's time for you to now start moving away from where you are. All of you, just fall back over here. Uh, skirmish mode can be off. Anglian raiders, get over here. Prepare to intercept this first group. So we haven't managed to actually see off the towers. Though the tower does seem to be sort of on fire. Uh, no, guys, you should be you should be running. Guys, guys, run. There's, there's, you know, there's raiders. That this is kind of their job. This is their, this is their one job in life. Just let them do it. Uh, okay. So same thing applies over here. These guys don't want to pull out just yet, but I do want to have them move over here, please, and have these sword headmen ready to actually do the job. Yep, sword headmen, get over here, please, and intercept these bastards. Go. So my sword headmen should do an excellent job here, and get some axemen on top of them too. Lovely. So, the towers are still doing beautiful work, and these guys can now start basically firing on these troops. So, I want these guys to basically now go over to their normal day-to-day. -day. Yeah, you guys back to normal shot, please. You guys back to normal shot as well. And now these guys are just being absolutely flipping shredded. These guys should be shredded pretty quickly as well. And now, you guys get your firing over there as well. These archers need to be... No, not skirmish mode, not skirmish mode, and not skirmish mode. And also, standard shot. My troops should, I think, stand and fight for some time. These guys can do a good job. And the sword headmen, if they're under concentrated fire... Are you still on skirmish mode? You better not be. I just want you to be focusing all your fire on these sword headmen. You guys... Getting over here and just basically, yeah, these guys are low threats to me. I should be able to just pretty much concentrate all firepower on this spot. Those are just basic spearmen over there. Those are long axemen. Continue focusing fire and in comes fire at the side. I'm losing some of my own troops, but that's fine. Send in the reinforcement spearmen over here. Deploy the reinforcement spearmen over here. You can see, I think this is actually going... Pretty well. The enemy may have captured the gate and the towers have gone down, but I'm pretty content with this, all things considered. We're doing good damage and the archers are in a position to fall back. How are we doing right now? Enemy man count is 1,200 odd and falling. Where are the reinforcements, by the way? Because didn't we have, like, you know, there was the garrison of the town? Because I'm controlling one of the army. Where's the other army? I'm genuinely not sure. Maybe I'm controlling... Oh, no, it's these guys. No, I'm totally controlling them. It's fine. Right, guys. Uh, continue laying fire down over to here. You guys, time to get involved. Lovely. These guys can just stand and fight and choppy, choppy, chop all flipping day. And you, my good man, are the general. So time to get involved. Uh, you can't do much over here. Apparently, horses would be... Not much risk over here. That's interesting. Uh, so, Axemen, Fresh, Eager. Yeah, we got them pretty well bottled up for the time being. But I might well need... I might need to deploy my general yet. This is... Even for the minute, how is my ammunition doing? Running a little bit on the low side, to be honest. But equally, these guys are... Yeah, they're starting to break. Okay, concentrate your firepower on those Axemen over there, please. So just keep hitting them. They're shaken. Casualties sustained. How much more have you guys got to throw in at this point? You've got some of your own archers, but honestly, they're not doing much. Actually, i tell you what you guys could do. Guys, get round the side over here. I think I've got a plan for you. Get out the side and go in this direction. 
and then loop back around, hit those archers in the flank. These guys are starting to struggle. They're starting to break apart. And if I can just see off the skirmishers, where's their leader? There he is. You see him with the little symbol right there. And he's in the back right now. But plenty is struggling. I can send in my... They're starting to flee. Starting to flee. This tower is on fire, but not too on fire, unfortunately. How's your ammunition? You guys pretty much... I think you guys are pretty much dry. You've got final few shots. Fire over there if you'd be so kind. Concentrate your firepower on the main door. These guys are starting to flash. They're getting a bit worried. But over here, looks like we've got a good result. Uh, in fact, we've cleared them out on the side. Fine. Get over here. Just get over in that direction. And you guys, concentrate firepower over there. You guys, have you got anything left? You've got a tiny bit left. Concentrate firepower over there. Dropping arrows in on top of them right now. They're really clustered together. And this is all going very well. It looks like they're not even going to get past the gates at this point. They're down to 750. We've still got 1,200. Where's the cav that I deployed over here? Excellent, guys. So, that canning plan I had. Outdoors, please. And then, over to here. In fact, actually, why don't you just go over here and please tell me you're not going back through the town. No good, they're not. That's just showing us the crow flies. So, some of my troops, I think, have broken too. But honestly, at this point, they are struggling to get in at all. Uh, we're going to have to actually chunk our way through the leader eventually. In fact, I'm going to send in my own companions, given it's not much particularly dangerous stuff there. And then my horsemen can actually get behind them, because they're starting to... Some of them are starting to flash too. We're starting to take the gates back. The battle was already in our favour, Mr. Narrator Man. I think you're behind the times here. And I think they know. They know I'm coming at this point. They don't like that one little bit. Right. Hit these guys in the rear. With that, we're starting to actually take back the gateway. And now we're just going to see off the archers too. Absolutely lovely. Let's just get down for the drama shot of us hitting the archers in the back. Though honestly... Doesn't do much, really, because horses are kind of not that good. Uh, though, actually, against basic uh, archers, that did... Ouch! You see, now the other archers have just turned on me. And now I'm taking 10 bajillion points of damage. So I need to go over here to chase these guys off. So now go away. <laughs> yeah, the horses are not that great. You've broken. Ideally, I need to see you off. I just need to back off. Are you going to immediately fire? Yeah, regroup. Now hit these guys again. See them off, run them down. The thing is, if they didn't run, they'd actually do much better. Because they're not even that bad in, like, standard melee. Down to 56. Fresh, confident, shaken. Apparently, they do not mind fighting horses because they're only light horses. These guys have managed to regroup, but they're kind of firing on their own guys, too. These horses will take a few knocks, but it's not too bad. You're wavering. Yeah, broken. Hit these guys, but then these guys will regroup because that's just what happens constantly. How's the scrum at the front door going? Not great for you by the looks of things. Uh, yeah, they are now fleeing and we should be able to wipe them out to the last man. And we've captured our own gate. Mo and there the... <laughs> yeah, in this game, basically everything refuses to ever stay broken. Anything that's broken will totally be back in like two minutes. Shattered. There you go. Now they're flipping done. Now let's start riding them down. We'll get some horses up their rear and then they'll be in trouble. In fact, these guys, I think, will just basically... Oh. Yeah. Now they'll turn away. Okay. They're broken for the time being. Are they actually shattered for once? No, they're just broken. But that'll at least give us a few minutes. Get down over here. And then these horses can just get over here. Fire damage. I think fire damage does keep going up over time. Just... These guys are not happy about life. Hopefully, they'll break momentarily. Yeah, there's the waiver and there's the break. Let's get right up the back of these guys right now. Because now my cavalry can... Assuming I'm not shot by archers who never stop recovering. Uh, now my cavalry can get right up the rear of people who are exhausted. And... Get up in there. Get up in there. What has that done? Has that triggered anything? No, that's not done a thing. <laughs> Cavalry charges ain't what they used to be, unfortunately. So get them back out again and just keep seeing off the flipping archers instead. Uh, but still, we are just slowly grinding them down. Actually, you know what? That might have done something. That might have actually done quite a lot. In fact, I might have just underestimated how much that charge did. 
uh, because their cavalry is starting to fall apart. This is now exhausted and shaken, so let's get the cav back in there for another charge. If we can just take out the infantry, we'll be in good shape, but now they've got no way of pushing inside. This wasn't even the most favourable city for me, to be honest. Like, there were 100% our better cities with bridges, and now get up the rear of them. Lovely. Gates are back under our control. We've pretty much won this. Everyone who's not pushing forward, push forward. Let's see if we can actually get to their flipping leader. Start cutting him down. Push through, push through, push through. And he's broken. Coursers, get back over here. He's exhausted. He's wavering. Come on. Break, 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 break. You bastard, break, you bastard. Come on, everyone forward. And he's gone. Nice, well done. Well done. The horses up the back actually did excellent work. And now we can just use the horses to make sure he actually dies and doesn't come back tomorrow. Absolutely beautiful. Ride the bastards down. Here we go. This is the downside of being a Viking. Your bodyguards, unfortunately, are on foot, which makes them more than a little bit vulnerable to basic scout cavalry. Also, units really nicely interact with the scenery these days, which I do rather like. Yeah, just kind of jumping over, demolishing stuff. I'm pretty sure all of that was in the Attila engine, but it's still nice to see because it wasn't really in Warhammer 2. Now, how much managed to survive? Not much. Decisive victory for me. Nice. So, he has been, oh, he's been well sent packing, and that's pretty much all he had. Lovely. That opens the door wide for me. We've struggled for a few turns. But now, now we'll be in good flipping shape. So, do we want to make 400? Nothing. 10% replenishment wouldn't be bad, you know. Kill him. No. Take on the warriors. Let's get our own troops back up to strength. Right, well, it's his own fault. He shouldn't have tried to push into that city. But then again, he didn't have much of a choice. He knew the reinforcements were coming. And we've got... Oh, it's another raid. Question is, ah, good. This one is, oh, even better. We got two raiding parties, and for once, they're nowhere flipping near me. So it's suddenly a good turn to be me right there. And also, this governor manages to get himself some XP for, you know, managing to fight with honor. Well done there. His loyalty is okay, so scribe for you. And I'm guessing that... Okay, I was going to guess that that was Guthrum, but apparently not. Apparently he doesn't level up from doing all of flipping that. Well, you are a governor, so logically the two things to give you more than anything else are indeed scribes and priests. Get that money coming in, please. Lovely. Now, what's the state of my army at this point? Because it's actually in pretty darn good shape. Pretty good shape. Which of my armies do I want to pursue? In fact, actually, this guy can't quite make it to Eleg. So the most logical thing for me to do right now is uh, this force, heads on, deals with you. And you, right now, this should be simplicity itself. So as you are actually already weak, let's just fight defensively to avoid any more casualties. But you are, yeah, he got stabbed through the face. I'm not sure he's getting back up from that. Though apparently I could try and take on some men anyway. <laughs> no, I think we're good. Let's take on the warriors for the bonus regen. And then he's fallen in battle. Good. Can I... Ah, I can't quite get to Elig this turn. But next turn, we will be there. And I think I just took a tiny bit of attrition from walking through a bog, unfortunately. Right. In which case, you do indeed start running south. It's spring, so you're okay. You can make it down to uh, Hereford right now. So, you head over there. No, sorry, that's Hartford. Hereford is, is, is over there. That's a completely different city. Um, okay. What else have we got? Building still needing repairs. That is the... Ah, yes. There were some light knocks during that battle. Nothing major. So, we'll pay for all of that immediately because, yeah, may as well. And we've got some war further going on. Not enough to get any bonuses yet. Right now, the English are okay with me. The army's pretty much okay with me. And my leader influence is 5, which is not so bad at all. Probably because I've picked up some good bonuses in general. Yes, indeed. He is officially a war chief and heroic. Plus 1 commander, plus 1 influence, which gives him, yeah, more men and more influence. It means his governors, etc. are more likely to stay loyal. Ah, now here's a good thing we could do. Right now, East Sex is making really good money. And next door... 
there is a building which, if I were to build it, would increase the market values and trade next door together with an extra seven food. That cannot be a bad thing to get in at all. No more food for the time being, but... You know what? We're okay. We're actually okay. We've kind of stabilised a bit after a bit of panic there. Now, over to Wessex. Yeah, they just seem to be backing out at this point, but I think they are still technically at war. Mercia is just going around trashing Wales. The English are doing really well this game, and that's worrying because, you know, I'm not the English. Uh, Sussex's armies are bumming around, but honestly, they're a little bit late to the party. Though, actually, the flipping vassals of Gwynedd are actually doing a decent job taking territory back. Because, yeah, the thing about this game is, because, like, three quarters of everything on the map has got no walls, no garrison... It's a very fluid mobile game all of a sudden. Like, things change possession very bloody quickly. Now, where are these raiders? Good. They don't seem to be coming after me in the slightest. And I've just picked up some flipping tech. My swords and axe are now significantly more effective. Very, very nice indeed. Now, let's actually get my shield effectiveness up. Because the thing is, if I go for this tech, I'm actually going to render some of my units obsolete in favour of new better units. But the new better units are really expensive. So, sometimes it's a good idea to deliberately not obsolete your old units if you're still dependent on them. I'm going to go for defensive tactics for the moment instead. And Guthrum still doesn't actually have the ability to... <laughs> it's just quite frankly unfair. Guthrum really deserves to have levelled up from all of this. Right, the economy is... Still not in great shape, plus 1,400. That's worse than when we started, though we are supporting much larger armies with it. Still, bare minimum, let's start taking some stuff back. Yeah, we could have a 1,000 right now for sacking that place. No, I'm having it back. And sadly, that ends your turn. But next turn, you can start heading in this direction. Because this place, this place is vulnerable. And another good thing, this territory I've got my eye on taking, I do actually have a little mission for that right now. My war fervor will go up if I can take over the province I took off my vassal. They handed themselves over to me voluntarily as a result of, uh, yeah, the fact that I actually defeated the raiding fleet. And the fens, I've already got half the fens. This is the fens here. And then I've just got to, wait, no, this isn't the fens, which is the other. Oh, bloody hell, this is the fens, isn't it? Right. So that's going to be a bit more tricky. There's nothing to stop me just walking in there. But that would be war against other Vikings. And Vikings need to not be fighting each other right now. We need to be working together to take out the bloody English. Uh, well, that might be a bit more complicated than I was hoping for. So, Wessex, what are you doing? Nothing much seems to just be falling back. Merce heading south through Wales, looking to basically just clear out Wales. Okay, I'm not really sure what's going to stand in Mercia's way at this point. That could be concerning. Still, on the plus side, the small Viking factions here don't seem to have actually lost territory. They've just had one of their territories a bit sacked by the English. So, no great losses. Let's just keep building up relations with them. Sooner or later, hopefully, we might be able to become friends and launch some joint raids against Wessex. Because if me and them and raiders from the south could all go in at once, there might be a chance and there it goes. And we've got more bloody blackmail coming in. Well, unfortunately... We've got to pay this bastard off. He's supposed to be loyal. Like, he's, well, he's four out of ten loyalty. It's not great, to be honest. I've given him an estate and everything. Fine, have 500 gold and shove off. Also, Carl, who's actually minding Norwich right now. Yes, one of the things I can do with my governors, if I desperately needed food, would be I could give them foragers. Foragers produce uh, plus five food locally, uh, up to plus seven, plus ten, plus twelve, plus fifteen. Honestly, spending five upgrades just to get up to plus fifteen food is not spectacular. So that's probably not the best thing in the world. But one tier of it for plus five food production, that might be worth considering potentially. I think on this occasion, keep the focus on the money. That's, yeah, plus five up to ten percent. And then up to an additional governance on top of that fact. Why don't you have a governance already? You should have a governance unless you're apparently just terrible. No, he's greedy, which gives him minus two governance fundamentally. Well, that's just bloody annoying. Though admittedly, governance isn't the best one. Like, even maxed out governance is only minus 30% construction cost and plus 25% market. But that only comes in at the top level. Like, below that level... It's only corruption falling 10% ago. How bad is corruption? Corruption represents 
A loss of about 12%. So, uh, yeah, we're losing about, say, 40, 50 a turn gold from this province alone. So, uh, yeah, it probably adds up to a few hundred across the empire, but not a huge amount of problem there. Yeah, instead I'll just kind of try and offset that by just putting more scribe and thus more money into the territory. Now, a bunch of good stuff has just happened. Essex has just picked up its church, so as a result, yeah, they've actually picked up a bit of happiness. They're still miserable because everyone hates working in the salt mines, so the people of Essex are just going to have to suck it up because I need somebody to work in the salt mines, and they're well positioned for it. Now, hmm, maybe slight concern. It's autumn. If I send Guthrum's army north right now, he's going to have to do this journey in winter. But I think he could actually do that without taking attrition. And then this place... Yeah, this doesn't look so bad. We should just be able to walk into here. The garrison's only six. Or I could let him... Yeah, I could just let him recharge during the winter. Might not be the worst thing in the world just to make sure that army's actually at full strength. Yeah, that's, that's probably not a terrible idea. I'll actually kick him off in spring. Right. Time to see what we're doing, because I feel like we need to redistribute this army a little bit. You, step out of here for the time being. So I'd say you are handing over those guys. Yeah, you're going to hand over those guys straight away. You are now on your own. I would like you to head back to Colchester. So we've got an actual general presence there, and you can actually start training a new army that's going to have improved weapons and Okay, now you're just out in the middle of nowhere. Never mind, I meant to tell you that next turn, but whatever. And this army is actually in decent shape and can guard London, which should hopefully mean Wessex doesn't get any stupid ideas. Yeah, I don't really like the idea of actually trying to move against an actual town with walls with this army. Because if you actually look at my infantry, all my good infantry, with the exception of one unit of axemen and a couple of units of really poor quality basic spearmen, is damaged so I don't know exactly what's going to be here but if there's like any decent swordsman backed up by walls we could actually take some very significant losses I'm gonna winter Guthrum's army here to let them recharge that'll be good enough for the time being and in addition we've actually got some surplus food right now and as a result of there being surplus food I'm not immediately committing to armies that's going to lead into additional unit replenishment so yeah that actually works pretty nicely now, alternatively, I could convert some of that into troops because I need to train troops if I want to unlock technology. How close am I to? Yeah, I am three units of missiles of missile specialist. And then I could start getting, oh, more ammunition and more missile damage. And also armoured archers. They don't seem so good. I don't really need my archers to be armoured. But still, that would be nice. Okay, go on. I'll invest some of this into improved stuff. Still no bloody archers. I've been very unlucky on the regeneration of those. The replenishment pool is just a dice roll. Fine. I will take, as I've only got one group of skirmishers here, I'll take a second group of skirmishers, and that will be fine. And as a result of that, we're up to... Actually, we're still just into surplus, so I still get the 10%. Good. So 25 is exactly the same as 35, so that was the right thing to do. But money is, money is looking low. Money is looking a little bit on the low side. Well, we've got one cheap thing we can do. Pottery can be upgraded from, well, technically a potter to a pottery. Which is a very subtle distinction as far as I'm concerned, but whatever. And we've got more farms coming in over time. We do actually have a few things in production. The nice thing is, even though you can only get like, you know, one or two things done at a time just because of the amount of money I've got coming in. Yeah, the production time in Thrones is quite slow. Even basic buildings take like four or six turns to complete. Because turns go by pretty quickly. Uh, they just kind of fly by because there's four of them a year. So, uh, not the biggest deal in the world if I have to just winter my forces here for a couple of turns. That seems like a decent idea. Let's see what happens in the rest of the world. Because uh, I'd like to see what happens with this raiding force of Nordmen. Because if we're lucky, they're just going to show up right here and start trashing Wessex. And that's going to pull Wessex, you know, down, south, out of the way. Keep them distracted for a few turns. Lovely. And as for Wessex, no! Did you just actually take um, Buckingham there? Okay. Well, that is interesting. We'll need to keep an eye on that. See if that... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that just happened. 
they just took some actual Viking territory. And you want peace? Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that, uh, that peace is a thing. Okay, I'll tell you what, counter offer, counter offer to this. Yeah, that's very excessive, in fact. Uh, what I would like is, cancel the payment, get rid of all of that. I would like you to become my vassal, actually. That is apparently insulting. He's still got too much land for that to be a thing. I could leave it be. No, bare minimum, I can... Oh, bare minimum, you've just got two farms you're sitting on right there. Hmm, interesting. No, sorry, not happening, bye. Now, let's go over to the raiders here. We have got... Oh, hello. What was that we just saw at the end there? I think we just saw some raiders floating around somewhere. Wherever they are, I've lost sight of them for the time being, no matter. Also, apparently, my little just kind of spare general who was in London is now heading towards um, Colchester. Um, his name's Dolphin, which is just quite frankly beautiful. Also, he's talented. Plus two command, plus two governance, plus two zeal. Okay, that potentially raises some interesting opportunities. I'm going to give him a quartermaster. Just to get him underway. I wouldn't mind having him in... Yeah, Colchester. If you actually settle in Colchester right now, then what should happen is... Characters, yeah. Plus two. So he's helping calm this place down. Lovely. And as it's winter, continue just letting these guys winter here. In spring, we'll set off towards Steenford. There we go. Buckingham has fallen to Wessex. And honestly, what do you guys have left to guard the rest of your empire? Basically nothing. No. And if there's basically nothing left here, then there's a question. Should we backstab these guys just for the sake of basically having the territory off them? Because this is good territory. This is really nice territory. Hang on, this was... Farmland and some iron as well. And I'll get a mission if I take it off them. Let's not start with that plan. Hmm, no, let's... Do I want to set off now? Are my troops ready? No, give them one more turn, wait till spring, stick to the plan. All right, Wessex, what's your plan now? Oh yeah, they're, they're heading further north. They're just sweeping up the flipping Vikings right now. I'm running out of help. I think I need to make some more friends very quickly. These guys are as good as done. They're not going to be able to do anything to help out here. I think I need to rally the Vikings up north to come down and deal with this. Now, the one advantage is if potentially Wessex expands too far north, then they might actually start rubbing up against bigger Viking factions that might be able to give them a fair shot. And... What well, actually just happens to... I know there's Nordmen. There's the Nordmen. Right. Did you just... I think you just burnt this place down. Good. Well done. This might represent an opportunity right here. Wessex might well be dominant for the minute, but they might well end up completely overstretching themselves. We will have to see. But spring is here. We are ready to start marching north. We are going to be having Steenford right here. This army has got to be, yeah, still weak, still being trained. And they are actually at war with Wessex too. So if we're lucky, these guys will be heading south to try and relieve Northampton. And not over to their own territory. What is this? Oh, that's Guthrum. Oh, perfect flipping timing, Guthrum. Guthrum, I feel like we're going to be moving around quite a lot here. Get yourself Quartermaster 3 and now upkeep for your army goes down. Very, very nice indeed. Get moving, Guthrum. Stay on the flipping roads, all right? I don't want you suffering any form of attrition, please. And another great haul is done. So at this point, hang on, let's have a little dig in here. Uh, should that have... I think that's maybe slightly increased some of the pool of units. Maybe it comes in next turn. Looks like a modest increase if it is one at all. Right, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'd say that's enough for now. 
we will leave things off here. Next time, I think we need to come up with an actual good long-term strategy for facing up to Wessex. We need to figure out who else is around, who else might be able to help us, and we need to potentially start launching some strikes against them and putting together big enough armies to actually, you know, do some good work here. I'm not sure we can rely on the other Vikings at all. And I think if we wait, they're just going to get stronger and flipping stronger. We need to launch our own assaults and we need to sort out our own economy. And us being Vikings and very good at raiding and pillaging, there might just be a good way to kill two birds with one stone. So I will see if I can make that happen next time. But in the meantime, I've been John Spin, many a true nerd. And this has been Thrones of Britannia. Thank you very much and goodbye. You know, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over... Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.